So today we're going to talk about social media, um, and the theme of the, the speech today are relationships. Um, relationships matter. Uh, so when you when you think about social media and networking and stuff like that, uh, uh, there's just a, a huge opportunity. When I first uh, came to the Philippines, I that was about three years ago. And I'm looking around, the first thing I went to do was look for an apartment or look for somewhere to stay. You look online and I can't find anything. And immediately you start recognizing what a huge opportunity there is on the web in the Philippines. You guys are all studying marketing and I'm here to tell you that you've got a very, very bright future. Uh, if you handle it correctly, make the right moves, uh, the web development in this country is going to be humongous in the next, I don't know, five, ten years, a few years. Just in the few short years I've been here, I've seen it change incredibly. Um, so let's get started with relationships. So basically you've seen over the last couple of years, uh, big web companies try to turn the internet uh, into having an identity. Um, when at the beginning of the internet, it was kind of like everybody can just go wherever they want, nobody knows who we are um, or what we're doing. And with the advent of, of companies like Google and Facebook, um, they're really forcing an identity on everyone. Uh, some things about that are good, some things are bad. Um, it's, uh, it's difficult to go unnoticed, and more and more you're being pushed into the, the real person that you are. Uh, even further than things like what you like and what movies you watch and where you're at. Even things like credit, uh, health information. I believe in the future a lot of that stuff will be online. Um, this slide that I have is a great example of, of, uh, of making an identity uh, on the internet. It's eBay. It's somebody's eBay profile. And if you look at it, you can really see, and if, you can see that there's, there's a system. There's negative feedback, positive feedback. Uh, it's a, a true democracy on a buyer and a seller. And I remember in, in, when I was a senior in high school, 99, one of, 1999, one of my friends bought, the eBay was a big thing coming up, and, and our parents, you know, the people from the generation previous, didn't really understand why are you going to put your credit card on the internet and buy something? Are they taking your money? What's going on? Uh, one of my friends was an early adopter for purchasing something on eBay. He actually purchased a car for 10 or 15,000 US dollars. And my parents, I remember, they couldn't get it. They couldn't understand why would they do that. But with systems like this and with the whole internet really evolving into an identity, um, further, again, further than stuff that you lie and all of the stuff that Facebook uh, knows about you, um, it's even developing into credit systems. Uh, so there's really awesome opportunity. Um, so giving the web an identity, Facebook, Google, all of these big companies are trying to do it. What they're trying to do is, is mimic our offline social networking or networking into an, an online manner because for thousands of years this has worked for us, just human interaction. And this brings on a whole new dimension which is really exciting in a lot of ways. This is a healthy example of bringing a, an identity to the web. Uh, all of this stuff, uh, all of the, the e-commerce and all of the things that you can do on the web with an identity though does come with a price. Uh, and I'm not going to get into it or go off on a tangent, but you do lose a lot of privacy. Um, and I think this is a, a huge thing that everybody understands and a lot of people have talked about. Uh, I'll just make a couple of points about the things that you lose by, uh, by putting so much information about yourself on the internet. Think about relationships. There's nothing that's mysterious anymore. Getting to know someone takes like 30 seconds. So it's, uh, it, it's lost lost a lot of privacy in that respect. Um, Facebook, I don't know if you've noticed, but I was reading something uh, the other day about, you know, everything in your feed on Facebook is stuff from your friends or small businesses or companies or organizations that you're a part of. And they've got algorithms, Facebook and Google both, that uh, watch where you click. Um, let's give an example of uh, a liberal or conservative uh, post, a uh, political party. If I'm on Facebook and I'm clicking more of the liberal uh, posts from my friends, Facebook will actually stop serving me the other opinions uh, sort of posts and start serving me more of what they know that I like. 
Now this is really interesting and it, and it brings some red flags with it. That means that the guys at Facebook, the guys at Google, are in charge of serving me what, uh, what I read every day. And there's so much information out there uh, that it's, it's important that these guys uh, take leadership and that we stand up for what we know is right. And that's the shift from uh, a traditional media where uh, the publishers and the, the TV stations and the editors of newspapers were sort of the gatekeepers of what people uh, understood. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit in a minute, in a minute social leadership. Um, for now, this is a great example of, um, of the price uh, that we pay for, for all of this uh, information being put on, on the web. Um, I'll, I'll revert back to the point uh, about the opportunity for developing the web in the Philippines. There's uh, been a couple of great marketing campaigns that I've seen since, uh, since I've been here for the last couple of years. Uh, if you hit the slide, we'll see one of them. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen this one. Uh, this came out, what was it, last year? Yeah. Or was it this year? Yeah. Listen, it was really good. Amazing. I've never seen anything like it. And it was wild because we just watched it virally from our office. We do SEO campaigns and social media campaigns. We have hundreds of clients. And we work with a lot of local uh, marketing agencies. Um, these guys won this campaign. They put it up. And I wasn't sure, but around the time that they put this uh, ad campaign up, I saw a lot of other websites going up that were talking about create your own meme, uh, make your own photo. And what you see is that from, let's say, if this campaign came out 20 years ago, there's a much different dynamic to how they released it. What they did was they had people participating. They got people's buy-in. Uh, when I searched this in Google Images, there's just thousands and thousands of things. The marketing agency didn't put all of these out. They just started the movement. They found people that were, uh, that were like-minded, that uh, all came together in some sort of group, that being this country, and they made fun stuff. The impact, I'd like to touch on the social media impact. It's pretty obvious uh, what the impact is. There's impact in a lot of different areas. A couple of the most specific examples of, an imp of the impact, the true impact of, of social media is uh, companies like Group One, uh, group buying discounts. Never before in the history of uh, the world have we been able to organize and force organizations and even governments sometimes to do what we want uh, just because they know we're organized. So group buying power, we forced competition and, and, and it's been a good thing for the general consumer. Uh, companies like Trippy, do you guys know this one? Anybody know Trippy? Okay, so it's, uh, it's a, uh, a travel company that allows you to connect with your friends, uh, log in with Facebook, log in with Twitter, the whole deal, uh, get travel recommendations based on where your friends have stayed, restaurants they went to, all kinds of stuff that before you would have to go around to your network and ask each individual person, hey, I'm going to wherever, where do you think I should stay? You can do this all automatically now. And it's pretty amazing. These are some, some examples of the impact. Uh, social media means that organizations, uh, if you're a member of a group, or like Seth Godin likes to put it, a tribe, uh, you're able to stop and, and collect collectively come together and, and stand up for what you think is right or, or, or what you like to do, or things that you know will affect the community in a good way. It allows you as an individual or a group of people to stop and stand up and say, hey, this one's important. Take note of this. It changes the, the media from, again, being those gatekeepers as the editor of a newspaper to just being any person. Uh, and that comes with responsibility. Uh, so buying power is a good example of the social media impact. Um, what you want to do is find like-minded people and do something about it. You guys are already doing it with this organization. Um, and hopefully there's a lot more events and a lot more speeches that will uh, help progress maybe the LSL will add new classes to the curriculum. Um, on the other side of the coin, there are some things that, that we want to really pay attention to as potentially a negative impact of, uh, of social media. One of those is that uh, it forces uh, perception on everybody. And as you, as you graduate and get jobs, You'll learn that when you're dealing with clients, whether it's uh, a big company or a small company, that everything that matters is, is perception. I've actually been preaching this to everybody in my organization for the last couple of months. 
And it's true. Uh, if somebody thinks that you're something, then you are, whether or not you actually are or not, especially in a business relationship. Um, with a client, if they think that you are or you're doing something or that the campaign is going any specific sort of way, then it is. Uh, so with online marketing, a lot of it involves uh, metrics and tracking the influence and tracking the return on investment and conversion. And you'll notice this is basically pretty much what all clients want to want to see. What it allows is brands and, and people to control perception. You've seen all of these folks that have amazing online uh, profiles and lots of followers and all of this kind of stuff. And you know, they, they really have an impact. Um, it's enough that you can actually start a movement uh, by yourself. So let's see. How does social media influence decision making? This is the next point that I want to make. So I'll, I'll drill down on uh, uh, a couple of things that I talked about with the next slide. So there's been a big shift in what people call interruption marketing. Have you ever seen guys like this? <laughs> Not specifically, but uh, you've seen the guys with the sandwich boards and or the, the people with the flyers, they're everywhere. Handing out flyers. This is interruption marketing and this is traditionally what has um, basically just ruled marketing. Um, in America, I remember growing up uh, in a culture where everybody is selling everybody everything. And there's nothing shy or respectful about it. We're the ones that had the, on the TV stations with this, this sleazy uh, uh, used car salesman with discounts, discounts, and you know it's not true. It's all a lie. Um, but it's changing from this. Especially with small businesses, there's a lot of startups. We're really excited to be in Manila because there's so much innovation going on right now. We believe it's one of, and it already is one of the next hot spots. Like Silicon Valley, like a lot of other great places in the world, that, that come with small ideas and really push them out to the world. Social media can help this. The internet can help this. And what I want to make in terms of a point with interruption marketing is that you may become part of a small organization or start your own organization after you graduate. Don't think that just because you don't have the money or the funding or the, uh, or the, the investors to do interruption marketing, like pepper the radio all the time or get commercials on TV, that you can't actually be effective because it doesn't take that anymore. It doesn't take, a lot of small businesses don't have the funds uh, to, to put ads everywhere. But if you if you handle it correctly, like the more fun in the Philippines, if you create uh, uh, something that like-minded people are interested in and give them a reason to tell your story, you can do a lot of it just virally. And this is something that I want you to remember. Uh, what do people buy? Uh, when you're out there and you have a job, uh, if you're in marketing, your job is to push the brand and collect leads for the salesman to, to sell it, right? And people buy, remember when you're when you're branding whatever the product or brand is, if people don't buy this. They buy you, they buy a person, uh, their personality. They'll buy from you because you told the story of the brand. Competition is so fierce today, you can't just scream loud enough and somebody will say, okay, you're right, I'm gonna buy your product. No, you have to involve them. You have to tell the story of, uh, of your product tell them why. They'll buy because you're honest with them. They'll buy because maybe at some point you'll say, I'm not good at that, but I am good at this, so you should buy this. Right. So you play on your strengths, and they'll buy because you're honest, they'll buy because you, you're human, you're a real person, and you can be agile. Meaning change, uh, mold into the service set that you see the market going through. Uh, I've been a part of a couple of startups, and it's interesting, um, maturing through the growth uh, seasons and learning who your true customers are. You always start out thinking, I know I know exactly who my customers are. I know exactly what they want to hear. But inevitably, as the months go by and you learn, uh, you get a sale, you drop a sale, you grow, the marketing campaign goes good, the marketing campaign kind of doesn't do anything, you start to learn who your real customer is. And it becomes really valuable. Uh, let's see, so brands must find their customers. Uh, I heard a, a good quote, and I'll read it. Allow brands to find the groups of customers that they want to have. Don't force people into buying uh, 
uh, or being convinced to buy. So nurture your customers that you do have into being advocates. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Um, the next one I want to show you is an example of a, customer's, a customer of ours. Uh, this is uh, a meme. Everybody knows memes, right? They're all over the place. So this is a good, a good example of a, a viral meme being spread. It's a company called Explore Talent. It's an American company that does um, talent placing. So actors, models, uh, drummers, musicians, singers, anybody that needs a gig or anything like that, this website, this social network connects them with the actual uh, job. And they have seven million members, active members. So it's a big, big network. Their social media strategy is huge and they're great at it. The, this one in particular, I chose it because it's got pretty colors, but you can see there's 2,600 people like this. This is amazing. 406 people share it, shared it. The, the biggest one that I saw on their Facebook page that, that we saw was 326,000 shares. Amazing. Um, to show you an impact of how that influences the, the traffic uh, to the website, you can see that this is a snapshot of how many visits were referred by what campaign. Okay, so Facebook, what was this so far from one month or? That's uh, almost a year. A year, okay. So 327,000 visits from Facebook. You saw the guy with the crazy thing on the set. This is the kind of stuff they're posting all day. Now, it's appropriate. Don't think that it, stuff like that will just work for anything. It wouldn't work for my, my SEO company. I can't post stuff like that. But a talent scout agency? Sure, of course. So it's a really cool one. You can see that Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo Answers, YouTube, LinkedIn, the first nine out of 10 are all, and then uh, WordPress, blogs, are all from, uh, from their social uh, influence. Um, so this is an example of a really big one with a lot of influence, but the point that I want to make with this is don't think that it has to be some huge, oh my gosh, hundreds of thousands of likes or shares to make an effect. If you can get just a, a small group, um, if you can do, uh, if a thousand people drive across the country to watch your band perform, that's a big deal, right? It's a huge deal. It's not 327,000 worth, but the impact is, is just about the same. If you can get dozens and dozens and dozens of like-minded people doing what they, they already want to do just because you've identified it, then it's just as effective. So don't think that it has to be some large, large thing. Um, what you do need is real connections. Uh, so that'll lead us into the misconceptions of social media. Social media won't bring you, uh, you know, tons and tons of customers. Um, it's only good for certain industries, actually. Social media is something that uh, uh, that's good for retail businesses. That's good for. Um, discount. Uh, one of the companies that I let on my wall is Oops, okay, of course. I want to know when is the next 99 peso sale, just like everybody else does. Why don't they just change it to these are the prices all year long? I guess they wouldn't have anything to get us excited about. Uh, so it's smart. It's they know what they're doing, and and it's great. So retail industry, discounted discount industry. Let's talk about the social media cocktail party and the facade that is Facebook, I guess. Um, you have a lot of connections on your profile, I'm sure. You probably don't know all of those people. Uh, when, it com right? when it comes to making real connections, it's seriously, it's a, it's a cocktail party. Who's talking about me? Who connected with me? Um, you just didn't want to offend them by clicking ignore, right? So you just accept, accept, accept. But it's not a real network. The only thing that's going to matter uh, in, in, in marketing, in real marketing, and for that client that you're going to do the campaign for, is did somebody buy? Not how many friends they have. It's a facade. I have um, connections that I could call all over the United States, all over the world, that I've never met in real life, that I could say, hey, can I spend the night at your place? I need a place to stay. And they would say yes. You know why? Because I've been through stuff with these folks. They're clients of mine. We have a real connection. We've been through ups, we've been through downs. I've never met them in real life, but if I needed something, they would go out of the way for me. And this is the point I want to make. If you want to make a real network, then you 
have to go out of your way for people. If you start going out of your way for people, when you need them to go out of their way for you, they will. And this is what you do with customers, all right? So forget the facade. If you want a real network, go out of your way for people. It'll make a huge, huge impact. Uh, let's see. So real connections, got it. Engagement. Uh, again, buyers want a brand story. This is a good example of a brand story. This is a shoe store, and I saw it used uh, a couple of weeks ago, so I wanted to mention it today. This is a shoe store, um, and if you see the part in red, it says Tom's Shoe Store. With every pair you purchase, Tom's will give a pair of new shoes to a child in need, one for one. What an amazing concept. Now he's got people like me and you that don't know how to help other people out, or, or the majority of the population, we don't know what to do, and we probably don't have loads of money to help other people out, but we all buy shoes. And think about the impact of what happens when people get excited and share in this brand. And if you if you go to this website, we don't have it here, but he's got a, a big portion of his website dedicated to their movement. And he talks about it and he videotapes uh, the, the, the folks that are getting the new shoes and, and gets people to, to dial in their videos and to send in their videos. Now he's got, when somebody buys a pair of shoes from his website, he's got them telling the story for him. This is all free marketing. He doesn't have to tell the story. I'm guessing he doesn't have any TV commercials or anything. It's viral. And it's something that everybody can relate to and everybody wants to help other people, right? So this is a really good example of, um, of something great uh, that, that really came in and marketed his brand for free. Uh, three things to take away. Uh, without engagement, fans are worthless. Everybody knows that. Uh, the first thing to take away would be to challenge things. If something is broke, figure out a way to fix it. If you're you're uh, wondering what to do, if you have a new job, I don't know, or you're working for a big corporation, don't just uh, just go under the radar. Find something that's broke and fix it. If you really want to make an impact, find something that's broke and fix it. Normally, you can just find something that's broke with a lot of stuff. Might be hard to get it fixed, but fix it, and you'll see your career just go really fast. Uh, the next slide shows a good example of uh, something that's broke. Does anybody know what this is? It's a movie theater one, and it looks like way up here there's one person doing the ticket sales. That's broken. All of these people are mad. It's broken. Somebody told the movie theater, "Hey, we need to cut down on costs." Let's be honest about it. Somebody said, some boss somewhere said, let's cut down on costs. And the other person's idea was, let's only open one cashier. <laughs> so all of these folks are standing there. What would be something as uh, uh, an online landscape that could fix it? How about selling tickets online? How about making, if you do sell tickets online, making it more prominent, putting more budget towards <coughs> online uh, sales? You wouldn't have all of this. So this is just a, an example that I ran across. Find something that's broken and fix it. And you'll see a, a lot of people applauding you and your career will probably take off because of that. Um, the second one is commit. Commit to your idea. Um, charisma doesn't just come from an idea. Charisma comes from taking the lead and just going with it. You know, don't worry about how it looks or if it's uh, if it's going as fast as you wanted it to go, if it's effective and you believe in it, then commit to it and finish it. Um, people want to be missed more than anything else in the world. So if you create a group of like-minded people, when one of them is gone, you feel it, and they feel it. And if you can create this group, you can change a lot of things. Whatever you're trying to do, you certainly can. Um, the last thing I wanted to note was uh, to touch back on the opportunity here. One of the things that Itamar and I have talked about a lot is uh, in the, the Philippines web landscape is uh, e-commerce. Um, in the States, people are buying stuff all over the place and it seems like it's still, it, it's not caught on as much. I don't know if that's because people are less trusting of the web or what, but one day 100 million people that live in this country will start spending money online want to talk about an opportunity or a direction, look into that. 
it'll be a huge opportunity. Anytime you can connect two types of people, ones that need something with the solution, if you're the facilitator in the middle, then you're going to be rewarded greatly. Uh, think about PayPal. PayPal, before PayPal, you couldn't, you had to take money out of a bank, go to somebody else, give them the money, and everything was sort of cash driven. PayPal created a way that you can connect buyers uh, and sellers with this some sort of faux money thing, but they've turned it into something that's amazing. Uh, that's being a facilitator. E-commerce will be big in the Philippines in the next five, however many years. So you should look into being a part of it. The last example that I wanted to use was uh, an example of leadership. Uh, in Barack Obama's campaign four years ago, when he first ran for president, he uh, used as part of his uh, election campaign a stance that he wouldn't vote. He came out and spoke to everybody and said, I'm not going to vote for FISA. FISA was one of the rules that allowed the government to tap phone calls, and everybody's like, oh, don't do that. Uh, this is too much invasion of privacy, similar to the censorship thing the Philippines is doing a few days ago. So Obama was saying, I'm not going to vote for this. Uh, it's not part of what I believe in. So he became president, a couple of months later, changed his stance on it. Now, Barack Obama hired to his board of directors for social media some of the top players in the, the social media industry. I think the CEO of Twitter was on his board. And so what we saw when he ran for president four years ago was some amazing uh, things that we've never seen before in history. One of those amazing things was this website, and the, the URL is mybarackobama.com. And anybody can go in there, create a group, talk about current issues, and, and for the campaign, it was a good opportunity to get people talking about whatever it was. Well, when this issue came out, his supporters just completely turned against him. And they made a group, and they started saying, you can see it, President Barack Obama, please get visa right. Because he changed his stance. He came out and said, I'm going to vote for this bill now. And they felt betrayed. Um, so what happened is, is you saw hundreds and hundreds of supporters come out in a very, very public way against him and just start trashing him. In his own website, on the group, all over the place. We can't believe you're doing this. You betrayed us, blah, blah, blah. He responded to it and wrote them a note personally and said, listen, I appreciate your uh, opinion. Um, I want you to know that I hear you, but I'm going to stay with my stance. I'm, I'm continuing to decide to vote for this bill. And what it did was, was show them that somebody is in touch, he is paying attention. Um, and then after that, they continued to be angry. But what happened was you saw a lot of the supporters realize that, hey, the website group isn't getting shut down. Even though they were trashing him on the internet, they started to realize, wow, he's choosing to keep this group page alive <coughs> on the web. You can see everything, all the comments, everything. What an amazing display of leadership by somebody that is taking punches and believing in what he uh, decided to. Uh, this is the type of leadership, and the point is, if we're gonna to really take this sort of media with social media to the next level and use it for good, and this is the type of leadership that we need from uh, our leaders, from all of us, and whoever else is creating movements and being that.